following on the Zoom today. I saw former State Senator Terry Vonoff, uh, some of your kids, and it's just great to see uh, that you are a celebrated person as you should be. And again, I want to thank you for all you've done for this organization. Anytime we have asked Roberta to help out with anything, including travel to faraway destinations and discussions on uh, trade and tariffs and uh, we, you've always stepped up and said yes, so thank you so very much. Thanks for being a leader in this retail community. In fact, Roberta, I think that actually gets us okay. to your presentation where we can uh, kind of learn a little bit more about the lessons you've learned and we'll take forward uh, as your ventures go forward. So I am going to uh, queue up your slides here. Give me just a moment to do that, but I will dispense with a, a long introduction since we just uh, talked a little bit about you. Um, but again, thanks so much for being here today. Looking forward to hearing your presentation and you should see it, uh, should see it popping up relatively shortly here. Well, thank you everyone. It is such an honor to be here today. And I do have to tell you that when Bruce asked me to talk about lessons learned from a retail entrepreneur, I saw my whole career flash before my eyes. And I have to be honest, I found it really hard to sincerely think about what lessons that I've learned that would be most useful. So I started at the beginning and that's what I'm gonna share with you now. In September of 1998, after spending an amazing summer with my four-year-old twins, I actually took a break between some jobs. I started a new adventure. After many goodbyes featuring my children crying on the stairs, I walked out the door in a burgundy t-shirt dress ready to meet my new staff as Chief Operating Officer of Creative Kid Stuff. I walked into the office up a flight of red crooked stairs and into a small apartment and a former bedroom with a slanting roof above the Linden Hills store. Myself and this new CFO, who is also starting that day, and who also would share that bedroom with me for the next five years, we started setting up our office. The only problem was that our desks were still in boxes, completely unassembled. We sat down on the floor, yes, in my jersey dress, and started building, not just the desks, but also our relationship. We started sharing our vision for this toy store, talking about what it could be, and just as importantly, what it would take to get it there. And I wouldn't have made it without her. She was an amazing partner. In recalling that story, I realized there were three important things, pillars of what I've learned and how I've come to work. Relationships, vision, and courage. Before we get started though, let me give you a little bit more on my background. So as Bruce said, I was most recently the CEO and president of Creative Kid Stuff. We were a nationally recognized specialty toy retailer that covered brick and mortar stores, our own website. We sold on Amazon. We had a wholesale distribution business and a nationally syndicated television show called The Happy House. In addition to that, I've served on and been honored to serve on many boards, including the Glenn Nelson Center, the Minnesota Retail Association, the University of Minnesota College of Design, Temple Israel, Jewish Family and Children's Services, and the Bakken. I also have a large, loving, very passionate family, a bossy Irish setter, some very demanding hostas, and now I'm trying to learn how to golf. That's me. But let's jump back into lessons learned from a retail entrepreneur. I mentioned that I was going to talk about three pillars, and as someone who's worked in the toy industry for over 25 years, I'm going to use some Legos to help me. First, I wanna talk about relationships. I have always loved the people I work with. I was honored and blessed to work with the most dedicated, intelligent, hardworking people who were never afraid to grow and step outside their comfort zones. And I was afforded that opportunity, firstly, because of my approach to compassion. Compassion to me means meeting people where they are at all points in their life and career. Nearly every minute of my time as a CEO, there was an employee, a customer, a vendor, a contractor, someone in my office or on the phone or at a trade show or in a store. 
that I had the opportunity to make an authentic connection with. When you act with compassion, people open their lives to you, they become invested in your well being and the people that you care about. And you cannot tell me that that does not affect the bottom line. And in these times, I believe compassion is more important than ever. Compassion is something you give, but it's not the end of the chain. Ultimately, we show compassion because as much as we're building a business, we're creating a life for everyone we work with. We often said, you can work really hard, but remember who you're working hard for is at home waiting for you. At Creative Kid Stuff, we were also known for having the best customer service. One day, a few years in, an employee called upstairs to our bedroom to let me know that there were about 10 staff members from a competitor milling around the store. So I quickly went down those crooked red stairs because I get sometimes got a little tired of it and asked for them all to come over and talk to me. I explained who I was and I asked them why they were there. Why are you here? And they explained that they were trying to understand how we do it at Creative Kid Stuff. I let them know that unfortunately how we do it wasn't going to be something they could find on the shelves. And that the secret sauce here was about the culture of service that we worked very hard to build. Built by empowering the staff to create solutions and make our customers day. And our expectations were really high because there's no reason a customer should ever leave a retail store unsatisfied. And that brings me to the last thing I wanna to touch on in this pillar of relationships. And that is optimizing the talent of the people you work with. Optimizing talent means seeing who they don't know they are and giving the opportunity to them to live into that. That means standing behind them and supporting them when they try new things. And we tried a lot of new things. When they succeed and when they fail, because that's where we learn the most. It also means standing next to them and being a resource without passing judgment while they learn. When we're successful in doing those things, the people we support allow themselves to take bigger risks, strive to be more, and more often than not, they absolutely flourish. I could happily talk for hours about the lovely people in my life, but I also think it's important to address a few other concepts. And the next pillar I wanna talk about is vision. All right, I'm not actually done talking about people yet. The relationships we just discussed mostly dealt with the people in our own companies, in our own work streams, in our own lives, the us. Sometimes, however, try as we may, us won't be enough to get the job done. And that's when we need to work with them, our competitors, with whom we share the market. In 2001, we started a whole new thing. We led the industry by collaborating with then Marshall Fields, now Macy's, putting on our, our product in their stores, leading a movement that would involve other specialty retailers like Cooks of Crocus Hill, Thomas Pink, Phillips Electronics, and many others. In addition, we partnered with CBR, the best specialty retail airport partner and open airport stores. So sometimes we must band together or else, you know what, we're all gonna find fall behind. And the creation of the strategic alliances can be vital. And that's never been truer than right now. And I really wanna tell you all but I feel like I can't emphasize that enough. I feel if you stay in your own cocoons right now and don't reach out to the people who are in your business, around your business, and look at how you can build stronger businesses together, I believe that's gonna be part of the solution of coming out of what we're in right now. But when we're not working with our competitors, we are, well, yep, we're competing. And having vision makes the difference in winning that competition. It means being inquisitive and probing the market to see what isn't there. At Creative Kid Stuff, we also led the market in finding what we called the white space. 
Usually that means finding the right balance of inventory on the shelf, but for us, it was also a philosophy that extended to the big picture. It meant finding the holes in the market where there were opportunities and having the open eyes and ears necessary to capitalize on those opportunities. As a specialty retailer, when we found them, we could move hard and fast. And I'll never forget when fidgets most recently became the trend. We didn't have one, we didn't have two. My staff moved so fastly that my merchandise manager created literally a sea of fidgets. Our merchandise group created beautiful walls that people could shop off of to find what they were looking for. That kind of immediate response to what the missing place or the white space is really important. And we worked really hard with our vendors to be first to market because especially it was part of our being to have product before anybody else in the marketplace could. So our relationships with our vendors were hugely important. But being inquisitive is only half of the equation. It's not only seeing about what isn't there, but also being able to imagine where you can take what you have already. At Creative Kid Stuff, we did curbside pickup and fully assembled delivery from the beginning. I can tell you many a birthday or a holiday where my staff was in somebody's home assembling or bringing something quickly that was already pre-assembled. In 2013, we created an online concierge program that allowed people to shop through our website visually via Skype, because that's what we had in 2013. And in 2018, we were poised to launch a teleconferencing expansion that anticipated the shifting trends in consumer behavior and allowed us to bring our amazing service out of the stores and into the homes and workplaces of our customers. When circumstances were challenging, vision was necessary more than ever. And that brings us to our last pillar, which is courage. In talking about courage, I wanna talk about resilience. And I'll start by talking about another story, the great Beanie Baby bubble burst of 1999. It's hard to keep a straight face saying that. But harder is keeping a business afloat when seemingly overnight, nearly 20% of your revenue stream is no longer in demand. Market disruptions, crashes, 2007, 2007, 2008 recessions and disasters, both natural and unnatural that we're in right now are not the exception in business, they are the rule. And when they surprise us, which they will, and they have, it takes persistence, flexibility, and sometimes just sheer willpower to get out of bed and confront that balance sheet. Don't kid yourself. It's those things that separate the businesses that will survive and advance and those that will not. Whether you're leading a company, a department, or a checkout terminal, you are responsible for an aspect of your business. And part of that responsibility will be making unpopular decisions. In life, we are called towards stability, security, constancy. The world changes quickly enough outside of our work that change within it is sometimes very uncomfortable. So when that change breaches our workplace, we lash out at the cause. And you will often be that cause. I can guarantee you, I was not everybody's favorite. You make decisions based off the knowledge available to you. You make them for the health of your business, for your team, and for their sake. You have to have faith in yourself. Making decisions is hard, but when we make hard decisions, we do have the opportunity to make a difference, even as one person. I know Bruce talked about in partner that uh, in, we in partnership with the Minnesota Retail Association, I went to our state capital. I call it the three T's for my industry, taxes, tariffs, and testing. The one I'm gonna talk about then was going to our capital to speak out about taxation for Amazon products. The result helped create a fairer marketplace to do business in. And it was because I made the decision to stand up. We are all capable of improving our lives and other people's lives every day. Most of the times it's gonna be small, 
so small, you might not even see it. And sometimes it's going to be so big, you couldn't imagine it. But we were all capable of making those differences. So relationships, vision, courage. I've clipped together these Legos. And what have I made out of them? I'm going to tell you. I'm not sure. But that's the point. You can make anything you want, anything you can think or imagine, and everyone has their own set of unique blocks that they're going to build with. If there's one last lesson from a retail entrepreneur I can share, though, it's a lesson on why we bother building in the first place. After 20 years of being in the children's world, for me, none of what I build is important if it doesn't serve other people. And in particular, the generations after me who will inherit what I build. The greatest thing we, we can create is an environment for our children that is free of hate and prejudice. An environment that protects them from discrimination based on the color of their skin, who they love, how they identify, where they're from, or who they wish to be. And if there's a difference I can make, a legacy I can leave, that's what I would choose every time. I'd like to finish by sharing a quote. Fight for the things you care about, but do it in a way that will lead others to join you. Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, 2015. May her life be a blessing. Thank you so much for letting me share these lessons with you today. I am honored to be allowed to do so, and I hope that they'll be of service to you. Thank you so much. Roberta, thank you very much for sharing all that with us. We deeply appreciate it. There was some, there's some great wisdom in the experiences that you had. And as I said before, we really look forward to seeing what's kind of next in the life of Roberta Bonoff and those close to her. So thank you so, so very much. We appreciate it. My pleasure.